Well, since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of Lonely Street at Heartbreak Hotel. And I'll be, I'll be so lonely, baby. Well, I'm so lonely. I'll be so lonely, I could die. Although it's always crowded. Yeah, well, when I was a kid, uh, I had a cousin who played drums. Uh, first cousin, in fact. And he's the only kid in the neighborhood who had a set of drums. He's the only one who could afford it. So uh, every day, about two or three o'clock in the afternoon, he, he had a grocery store, as folks did. And he lived like right next door to, to the uh, store. And he'd go over there and work a couple hours on drums, playing, you know, just himself and records, listening to big band stuff. And I'd go by there from time to time and sit down and listen to him, watch him play. And then he said, you want to play a couple? Yeah, I'll play. And I didn't know anything about big band music that much, you know. But uh, after you do it a while, you, just like anything else, you, get to, you, could, you learn to do it. So, And that's how we, all of us got started listening to other bands, you know, because we didn't have any money to buy any instruments of any kind, you know. So he was the luckiest one of the bunch. Yeah, well, uh, I did that for years. I worked uh, cocktail lounges, bars. Uh, you just, uh, what you do, you, you go in and whatever, wherever you're playing, learn something. You try to learn something. Whatever it is, you try to learn something. So uh, and that's, we worked these bars or whatever. So you'll learn a little bit of something everywhere you go. And uh, I, I finally went over to the Hayride, and uh, I was not what they call a country drummer, you know. Uh, so I had to learn to play like they felt, you know, so stick in a brush, pretty quiet, no loud noises, you know. And that's what I did for another 10 or 15 years, you know, just learn to play quiet and easy for them, you know. Uh, hardly any foot pedal, because they, they themselves didn't like bass drums, the artists. And in fact, they couldn't sing with a bass drum. And they, they, most of them sang out of meter, you know what I mean by that? They have a two four bar here and a three four bar there and it is. so I stayed out of the way. I, I wouldn't play the bass drum. I played it up here, you know, straight as I could. So if it had to turn the beat over, you don't you could turn it over without worrying about that bass drum. So that's I learned that's how I learned to play, just turn the turn the beat around for them. That way nobody sounded like a like a train wreck out there, you know. They had a big it was a very sheer curtain, it wasn't a very really heavy curtain. And uh, when it first started, they said, well, you have to play back there. I said, well, how come, you know? Well, you know, we've got country artists and they don't know anything about drums and one thing and another. I said, well, okay. I went back, well, I'll stay back there two or three weeks, you know, until Elvis come on, you know. He said, well, bring the boy out here, you know. We need to hear him, what he's doing. So he was the one really got us on stage. Elvis, he said, let, let him play, heck, you know. And uh, after that, then they, everybody wanted drums in. Oh, that sounds really good, guys. Uh, you want to play with me? No, I'm tired. And then I got tired. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> he walked in, and I knew he was. I mean, he had uh, these funny clothes. I call them funny clothes. You know, peg pants and the belts and the shirts and ties and everything. And uh, Scott had come over and said, hey, uh, we're going to do a couple of tunes tonight. You, you want to work with us? I said, yeah, uh, that's why I'm here. So I think they did That's Right. He didn't have a couple of songs anyhow. So That's Right, Mama, and maybe one more. And it worked out good, you know, for what he wanted. So he come in a couple of weeks later, same thing, same thing every week. I said, yeah, I'll be glad to do it for you. And he said, hey, we're going to go to Texas for three or four days. You want to go? I said, yeah, I'll go with you. So I went over there and we come back to Hayride again that Saturday night. He said, DJ, we're going to go back to Memphis. He said, we don't have nothing booked. We may never get another job in our lives. You know, just like that. He was serious. I said, oh, you'll get something. Don't worry about it. And, uh, he said, if I do, I'll call you, and if you, you know, you want to work with us a while. I said, yeah. So I was about a week or so late. He called. He said, uh, hey, we've got four more days out in Texas. you want to go? I said, heck yeah, I'll go with you. So it started kind of gradually. Built up to that point, and then I, then I was a regular after a while, you know. He said, we're going to do this Heartbreak Hotel for these friends of mine, May Axton, you know, and them. And uh, we did. Got a good cut on it, finally. And, uh, Chet Atkins, the guitar player, everybody knows Chet. He was playing rhythm guitar. So Scott says, Chet, you want to play lead? And he said, your turn, boy, you got it. You, you have to play. And uh, Scotty did, he did a great job. And but he was, he's afraid to play in front of Chet, like everybody else is, Who, who's not, you know? Uh, the guy's a genius on guitar, so 
and you got a little guy up trying to play something, and it scares you to death, you know, you just, you don't want to get out there and play. But he did a good job, good job. Scotty Bill had joined him first. They were the original guys. Well, he kept, they kept asking for a raise, for a raise, for a raise, you know. And uh, you know, you know, they never did get it, so they decided just to quit. And they did, just for a couple of days. And we went up to Washington, up to that part of the country. He called them all back. Well, I say all, Scotty and Bill back. And uh, I never did quit, actually, I just stayed on. So uh, they, they, they did a few adventures. They, and we were doing movies by then, so uh, we'd go out and work about two weeks for a movie, track, go home. When he finished up, we'd go back out there and do the same thing over and over. He, he, kept, he was doing about three pictures a year, so that made it easier. We just stay home most of the time and do pictures. And we were probably the first band to do anything in the round, as they called it. And uh, he looked good, he was singing good, and that, that little segment that we did, you know, in the round, it really looked good with it for everybody I'm talking about. Not just him, but everybody looked good. Everybody was playing good, so we had a good time doing that one. I really did. Was well, then he called, later they called, and he was going to open in Vegas. Well, we had been to Vegas once, and we didn't like it then. So I said, I don't want to go to Vegas, you know. And Scott said, I don't either. The Jordanaires said, I don't either. We don't want to go back out there. So we just all quit at the same time. I come by, when I, I heard, you know, you get you hear it through the grapevine that Elvis was in town. And Elvis was in town, everybody knew it, you know. So I went by the studio and seen him a couple of times, you know. It was hard as hell to get in, first of all. They didn't let anybody in there. I just lucked out. I knew some of the policemen that were there were security, you know. So yeah, I'm going in. He's, all, he's sitting in there doing nothing. So I'd go and talk to him for an hour or so, and I'd leave. And, oh, he's the nicest guy in the world. Uh, I don't know where these people got these ideas of well, he's a bad guy, but he was not bad. Uh, he'd do anything in the world for you, give you anything he had. Uh, uh, the guys were with him every day. Uh, we, we, we wasn't with him every day. They, they had houses, they bought them cars, or they, whatever they wanted that he bought for them. Anything they got now, he bought it. So how can you beat a guy like that, you know? Walk along the street to Heartbreak Hotel. Anything, yeah. So let's see. I was getting back to Chet. Chet would make Jello nervous, you know, he would. Well, it was the same difference in all of, all the things we ever done. Uh, he didn't like everybody spread out all over, the, all, all over the studio. So we were actually all in the same room, all kind of in a pile. Uh, except him. sometimes he's way over so they wouldn't feed in his mic. But most of the time he was right in with the band. And we did that on stage actually. We couldn't hear anything anyhow. So uh, we, we couldn't figure out how he knew where he was because he couldn't hear us and we couldn't hear him. So from time to time, he would back up to the band and uh, he'd get a note or two and he'd run back out there and start singing. So he knew where he was all the time. And we had to try to really watch him close to see where he was. Well, it was, a, it was an easy, quiet song, so uh, if you don't have sticks, you have to use the brushes to make it a little bit quieter where everybody don't, don't sound like a train wreck going on in there, you know. But, uh, May Axton wrote it, her and Tommy Durden, they were from Florida. And uh, they were a friend of Elvis's, and she, she gave him that song, and he said, let's cut it. You know, he, he really liked the lady, and he liked Tommy and all the guys, you know. So that was her first big record, too, the big one, you know. But it's the only one she ever had, you know, that, that amounted to anything. And Hoyt had a bunch of them, you know, but uh, that was the only one the mama had. That was something, wasn't it? Yeah. It really was. On the street to heartbreak hotel, you feel so lonely. You feel so lonely. What I actually played on it, not continuously, but as a starter, you have to start somewhere, you know, so you, you find the easiest thing to play. So, what it was is like dotted eight notes. Feels a lot better to me than just straight ahead, you know. This would be on two every time, two and four. 
that's where I, that's how I started playing. Uh, uh, when I was young, I was listening to the big band guys, you know, and uh, all the drummers played that swing beat. I had a couple of big time drummers, you know. I said, hey, ain't that, that don't work, you're not supposed to do it that way. I said, how come it does? He said, well, you're not supposed to play eighths against out of eighths. I said, well, listen to the records and see if it works. He come back a couple weeks later or something. I said, well, it worked. You just play what you feel like playing. You can get the best feel and play it. But some of those guys, you know, they were real school and technical and all that stuff. I said, well, it'll, it'll work, trust me, leave it alone. <laughs> you just do what you want to do. And if he didn't like it, he'd tell you, you know, uh, Scotty, can you do this, DJ? Can you move? Can you do something else? Can you put a stop here, a break there, you know? And he, he'd just tell you what he wanted, and he already he knew what he wanted. Sometimes he couldn't explain it to you, but he didn't know what he wanted. It was, it was, his, it was his final word. Uh, he had the final word. Whatever it was, that was it. We had producers, I call them clock watchers, you know, and uh, they'd sit over there and watch the clock. So uh, that's why I figured I don't know if they knew what they were doing in here. Hi, this is DJ Fontana, and actually this is my first Elvis Presley record that I played on, and we did that in Nashville. And uh, it was sold well over a million. So I, I told Elvis at that time, I said, see, you guys would have never made it without me. Of course, he knew I was kidding. Well, since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of Lonely Street at Heartbreak Hotel. And I'll be, I'll be so lonely, baby. Well, I'm so lonely. I'll be so lonely I could die. Although it's always crowded, you still can find some room for broken hearted lovers to cry there in the gloom. And now be, they'll be so lonely, baby. They get so lonely. They get so lonely if they could die. Now the bellhop's tears keep flowing. The desk clerk's dressed in black. They've been so long on lonely street, they'll never, never look back. They get so, they get so lonely They get so lonely, baby Well, they're so lonely, they could die Well, now if your baby leaves you You've got a tale to tell Just take a walk on Lonely Street To Heartbreak Hotel You'll feel so lonely, yeah You'll feel so lonely, baby You'll be so lonely, you could die some room for broken hearted lovers to cry there in the gloom and be so, they'll be so lonely, babe, they'll be so lonely, babe, they'll be so lonely, they could die. 